Okay, finally time for the full bootstrap percentile confidence interval example. And we're doing it for one last time on the average high school hydration. So let's get started. So let's write down what we're interested in. We're interested in the population of all high schoolers, and we're interested in a specific function, h, to go ahead and find what the average hydration of these high schoolers are, which we'll call theta. To do this, we'll go ahead and take one sample from the population. We could say in here it will equal to 20. Take a sample of size 20. And we're taking a single sample. So only having to talk to 20 people. That's pretty cool. We go ahead and we apply our function h. And we can go ahead and get theta hat, which is a good estimate for theta. The problem with theta hat is we don't know how good of an estimate it is. So we use bootstrap sampling to figure it out. So from this sample, we go ahead and take sampling with replacement, where n equals 20 once again. And we get bs bootstrap samples. And we get a lot of them. And we'll talk about how much in one second. From each of these bootstrap samples, we apply h one more time. And we get lots and lots of theta hat stars. We use these theta hat stars to construct the bootstrap sampling distribution, which we have right up here. I'll go ahead and denote this with a little theta hat star. Now, a good size for the bootstrap sampling distribution will depend, and we'll talk about that later, but 10K is always a good start. Once we have the bootstrap sampling distribution, we need to compute the confidence interval. Let's go ahead and compute this. We go ahead and look for two areas on the bootstrap confidence, or the bootstrap sampling distribution. Each of these areas will trim off a tail, a left tail and a right tail. And the area of this tail should be equal to 0 0.025. Or if you have 10K samples, there should be up here, 250 samples in this left tail. From each of these tails, we can look at the cutoff point with a Q low and a Q high. And now we are ready to write our confidence interval. So we learned two things. This is very important. The first thing that we learned is what we learned, I think, five or six lessons into class. This is that theta is best approximated by theta hat. You know, it doesn't matter how many bootstrap confidence or how many bootstrap samples you have. It doesn't matter how big this is. Theta is still best approximated with theta hat. Again, we just don't know how, the good, how good the approximation is. And the second thing we learn, perhaps more important, is what the confidence interval is. We know that the probability that Q low is less than theta is less than Q high. So we know that the probability that theta is between this confidence interval in this area right here will equal to 0.95. So we learned two things. Again, what's a good estimator for theta? And what's a good probabilistic estimate for where theta might lie in? How confident we are that theta is somewhat well estimated by theta hat. Okay. That is the full bootstrap percentile confidence interval. For those of you that are not interested in state-of-the-art stuff, please go ahead and hang with me one more video, and then I will release you. And for those that are very interested in applications of bootstrap, not just the intuition, go ahead and stick with it the entire way. Okay, thanks guys.